Hi, I'm Peter Kellner and the author of the Pluralsight 3-hour course, ASP.NET Core Tag Helpers. I've also authored quite a bit of the documentation from Microsoft that can be found on the docs.microsoft.com site. Drilling down through the ASP.NET, learning the benefits, and then finally to built-in tag helpers, you can see my handiwork. My Pluralsight course covers everything from introducing to authoring simple and advanced tag helpers. It also covers all the built-in tag helpers as shown here. The following three minutes is from my course and explains the details of the cache tag helper. If you want to see more, head over to Pluralsight, sign up for a subscription, and you can watch the rest. Like I said earlier, the image tag helper is probably the simplest built-in tag helper and one I expect you'll use quite often. Its single purpose is to make sure that the image that is being displayed, that is referenced from the source tag, is the most up-to-date image from your web server's file system. For this to happen, in other words, for the image tag helper to be activated and function as expected, there are a few requirements. First, you need to include the attribute ASP append version in your image tag. And second, there needs to be a source attribute included on the image tag itself. These two things will activate the image tag helper. However, that does not necessarily mean you will be guaranteed a fresh image. If, for example, the source attribute does not point to a local file, say it points to a URL instead, then no caching will happen. If it points to a non-existent local file, then again, no caching will occur. In both cases, the tag helper will not generate any errors or warnings. It will simply just not do anything, and it will render the image tag with the source just as you specified. Looking now at our sample view page, notice that we have just a source and ASP append version attribute set, and the rendered HTML will just have the source and the cache breaking parameter V set. The value of v is simply the SHA-256 calculated of the file on the web server's file system. Let's take a quick look at the source on GitHub for the image tag helper. We will not be doing this for most of our other built-in tag helpers, but since this one is so simple, it's a good one to use to get acquainted with the ASP.NET Core open source GitHub repository. Starting at the base, github.com slash ASP.NET, Navigate to MVC. Then from there, go to the source, SRC, and then finally to the tag helpers folder. Scroll down to image tag helper and open that file. As we scroll down, we find the two required public attributes, source, and further down, append version. We have a process method below that, and here we have the conditional that says if the attribute append version which translates to a real attribute ASP-append-version, then execute the proper caching code. Most of these built-in tag helpers have external dependencies on shared methods, which can be found under the tag helpers directory in a folder named internal. Here, you can see we have a file named fileversionprovider.cs. When we scroll down 100 lines or so, you'll see the SHA-256 being calculated. One final thing to mention on the image tag helper is that what is cached is just the SHA-256 value of the file, not the actual file itself. If we scroll up in the source of the file version provider, we see that when this SHA-256 is calculated, an expiration file change token is registered with the file provider. This token is assigned to the image tag helper's cache so that when the file changes, the cache expires, causing the image tag helper to calculate the SHA-256 of the file on the next invocation of the same image.